In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what you can do whenever the defense kind of starts to get over uh, aggressive, when they start to kind of have your number. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about how you can become the best Madden player that you can possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. It is completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it allows you to stay up to date because every single day on YouTube, we break down offensive and defensive videos that are designed to help you become a better player. And so if you want to get access to all that, all you have to do is subscribe. And we are in a little bit of a series right now on the bunch tight end. In particular, what we're talking about is we're walking you through a process, um, really kind of a systematic or intentional way that I would recommend that you start thinking about offense. And so the first thing that we've talked about is we've talked about the importance of a power play. We've talked about how um, you want to have a play that is very powerful. Um, it's kind of your base play. It's the starting point for any effective offense. Every offense has one, um, especially the best of the best. And so what we've tried to do is reverse engineer what do the competitive players do really, really well, and how can we imitate a similar concept or similar thought process? And so that's kind of the core uh, of these last couple of videos that I've been trying to do is trying to really teach you um, how you can go about making an effective and dominating offensive scheme. So the first part of that is a power play. The second part of that is a counter play. We talked about that yesterday with the play curl flat corner and how we want to have a, a play that we can go to that looks very, very similar to our power play, but it goes in a completely different direction. And so that's kind of the thought process for that. And then in today's video, we are specifically talking about constraint theory plays. And there's several plays that can fall into this category, but essentially what a constraint theory play is, is it is a play that you can go to once the defense starts to get over aggressive. An example could be um, a play action pass or a slip screen or a glitchy, you know, motion snap, or maybe, you know, even not even a glitchy thing at all, maybe just a simple route combination that can really force your opponent to have to adjust. And so that's what we're talking about in this video. If you want to get my entire Gun Bunch tight end offensive guide, it is available in the description. You can get the entire system broken down in detail with written setups, with video breakdowns, and with film analysis. So if you want to get that, that's available in the description for just 15 bucks. But what we're talking about, like I said, is we're talking about Gun Bunch tight end. And the thing that we're going to focus on is a constraint theory play. And so an example of a very, very good constraint theory type of play is the play inside switch. This can be used in several different several different avenues, several different ways. The way we're going to share with you how to use it in this video is essentially how you can make this look exactly like PA boot over but the beauty of this is different routes really shine in this specific play. So the play is inside switch. The setup for this play is actually relatively simple. What we've kind of thought through is again, if you can think about it like, um, if you can think about it like, what are the things that my power play and my counter play is likely to cause somebody to do? And this is exactly what it's gonna cause somebody to do. The first thing that they're gonna do is they're more than likely going to play essentially a Mabel coverage. They're gonna have, they're gonna double flat both sides of the field. As you can see right here, that's kind of step one. The next thing they're gonna likely do is they're gonna put a three rack hook over here on the right side. The reason why is because they want to be able to, uh, they, they wanna be able to try to defend the delay fade. And then it is also very likely that they're gonna stand kind of right here. And the reason why is because if we run the ball, they have to shoot this gap. If they don't shoot this gap, it's an easy 10 to 15 yards of running, uh, running real estate. They're very unlikely to stand right here, okay? Some defenses will stand right here, but in, as a general rule, the likelihood of their user is essentially this. They're going to kind of do this number and they're gonna come down on the delay fade. And so that's kind of an important thought process because what it's gonna do is it's going to show you kind of what we can kind of come to expect from the user, okay? So the setup for this is actually really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to put the square receiver 
which is the uh, far left receiver, we're going to smart route him, and we're going to smart route the X receiver, which is the tight end. So as you can see here, it's very simple. Then the next step that we're going to take is we're going to take the triangle receiver, and we're going to put him on a streak, just like this right here. So this is the routes. These are the, these are the powerful routes that we have. And the reason why we want to leave both flats is in case there's ever a situation where they blitz us and they don't have a flat, you want to make the defense pay. You really want to force the defense to always have to play hard flats. Um, and then there are some situations where you don't want to have flat routes, but almost every situation I like to have at least one to two flat routes that I can have in case they blitz me or in case they're just being undisciplined and they're not taking care of the flat coverage. Now, the last step is we're going to motion the square receiver to the left and we're just going to snap the ball, um, you know, kind of at the numbers just like we've been doing. And the first read on this play is this route to the running back. Now, as you notice right there, the three rep cook actually will do a decent job. I would tell you that he does not always do that. Um, it is actually kind of random at which he will jump the tight end or if he'll jump the running back. So that's just something to be aware of. But if they drop that three rep cook there, if you see someone in the vicinity of the running back, then you might not want to throw him, as you can see right here. But what's, what else is open is, as you can see very quickly, it's essentially a high-low read on the right. Now, the beauty of this is these are the zone drops. These are the adjustments that it's going to take for your opponent to be able to have a decent shot at being able to stop any crossing route on the field. And so the reason that this is significant is because if you notice, the crossing route, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the zone drop for the crossing route will not stop the corner route. As you see right there, the corner route is wide open. I can take the corner route pretty much all day. Now, I want you to think through just kind of practically here as we're developing this and this is what this is the level of detail that we go through in every guide that we do we think through what are the things if this then that what are the adjustments the defense is going to take one of the adjustments that the defense will take in this is they will simply use the tight end so they're going to stand right here they might as well just use the tight end because they know from experience that everything is going to come from left to right it's not typically you know in, in most scenarios they're not going to be able or they're not going to need to use her on the left side and so that's where this um, this route combination really, really shines. So if they do that, then this, right? If this, then that. So if you notice that the user goes to the right side, then what you're going to likely have is this easy read here for your square receiver. That square receiver is a very simple and effective read that you can count on um, if you're wanting to be effective. So that's another option. And then the last thing that I want to kind of hit on here is a little bit of a cover three bomb. And I'm pretty sure that I have this right. I'm I, I honestly kind of forget this because I don't really think in terms of like one play touchdowns all the time, but this streak will occasionally get open. It does it does kind of depend like on what side of the field. You might have to be on the short side. Let me just check it here. But basically what you'll see is this triangle receiver. If I pass lead to the left, you see right there he gets open. If I put him on a fade, like if I just fade him, I'm pretty sure he'll also get open in that situation. And then I think if I'm on the other side of the field, if I'm on the left hash, then I would basically, um, you know, I would basically you know, be able to hit that, hit that, uh, hit that streak anyways. So anyways, got the fade here, got the post, and then what you'll see um, is it's very likely that this fade, you see here the fade gets even more open than the streak does. But essentially what we've got going on is the flat zone is going to basically hold the cover three. The reason this matters is because it really forces your opponent to have to play very specific types of defense. We're able to threaten the left seam against the cover three. We're also able to threaten the right seam against cover three. And so that's the beauty of the offense. And so it's going to force your opponent to have to play things like quarters coverage, maybe something like this right here, uh, where they have a, a quarter type coverage. And that quarter type coverage is going to open up other things. Um, it's going to open up you know, several things within the play curl flat corner. It's also going to open up things in this right here, as well as other things for the entire offense. But this is what a constraint theory play really, really does well. Um, a constraint theory play basically takes a tendency that you might have in your power and counter play, and it does a really, really good job at basically building off of that. So the last thing that I want to share with you as far as this play goes is 
if for whatever reason, you know, they might be in a situation where they want to use the delay fade. Okay, let's just say that that's what they want to do. Okay, so if they're in that situation, it is likely that they're going to maybe not put a three red clip zone out there. You know, maybe they put it on the left side, maybe something like that. Um, you know, I just want to kind of get you to see this. So um, what happens is if they don't have a three red hook out there, or especially if you're in a situation where they're getting blitzed or whatever, you can throw this route quick to the back and get a couple of quick yards. Um, let me show you a, another example where like if they're blitzing, this is really, really good for, for blitzing situations. So I'm just gonna play hard flats here and I just want you to watch. And, and again, if you just think about blitzing and you use these routes, um, you're gonna have a lot of success. So if you see they just immediately jump down, you see right there the tight end's wide open and it's an easy, quick read. This is the beauty of the bunch tight end. When every, it, every single thing that you need to do from the bunch tight end in terms of moving the ball consistently as an offense is built upon everything looking exactly the same. When the plays look exactly the same, the defense cannot really cue in on a tendency. They can't just say, well, oh, I know he's running boot over. I know he's running uh, curl flat corner or I know he's running mesh or I, whatever it might be. That's the beauty of this offense. And so if you want to learn the best way to run the bunch tight end in Madden 21, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to get the entire offensive guide. It's the offense, exact offense that I have used in competitive Madden this season. I think it is very, very effective and very, very difficult to stop. Thanks for watching. If you want to get that guide, it is down in the description. There's gonna be a link down there for you. And again, it is just 15 bucks. It helps support the channel a ton, but I really, really believe it will help you become a better player on the offensive side of the ball. Thanks for watching, guys.